In this video, you will learn how to identify and generate numeric patterns. As we've said before, there are many different types of patterns that you can find in nature. You can find patterns in animals and in plants and even in weather. The same holds true with finding patterns in math class. You may see a sequence of geometric shapes. You may see a design that is increased following a certain pattern and you may see a sequence of numbers. It is our job to figure out what has changed and in order to do that we need to become pattern investigators or PIs. We have already discussed how to find pattern in a geometric sequence. However, finding the pattern or rule in a numeric sequence is a little bit trickier. As you can see, I have three different sequences here, but they all start very much the same. However, they do follow a different pattern. So we are going to use carrots to identify the transitions between each term. Each term, as we're referring to them, are the steps in our numeric sequence. So I'm going to draw a carrot here to show how I would get from 2 to 4. And there are two different ways I could do that. I could add 2 and I could multiply by 2. Um, and then I'm going to move on to the next two terms, and I'm looking to go from 4 to 6. So I'm going to start, unless I find that there is a really tricky pattern, I'm going to start with what seems most logical. And since I'm not probably going to be multiplying by a fraction at this point, I could, absolutely. But right now I just want to focus on seeing if I can find the rule by looking at the more of the basic operation. So I'm going to go with adding 2. And if I have to come back and revisit that, I will. So now I'm going to go from 6 to 8, and I would then add 2. And to go from 8 to 10, I would add 2. And to go from 10 to 12, I would add 2. So I can logically deduce that my pattern or my rule is add 2. So if I were looking at the last term that I have to build off of, uh, it is 12. And if I were to continue that pattern and add 2, my next number is going to be 14. And if I were to extend that one more place by adding 2 to 14, my final variable in the sequence would be 16. Now, in my next sequence, I'm going to start very much the same. I'm going to go from 2 to 4, and I would do so by either adding 2 or by multiplying by 2. But to go from 4 to 8, I now have two logical options. I can add 4, or I can multiply by 2. And to go from 18, 8, to 8, 8 to 16, sorry, I could add 8 or multiply by 2. So if I'm looking back over, I'm actually looking for a pattern in my transitions, and I see multiply by 2, multiply by 2, multiply by 2. So I can deduce that that is the rule. The rule is to multiply by 2. So if I want to extend that, I'm going to look over here to my last term in the sequence, and I would then need to continue that by multiplying it by 2, and I would get the answer of 32. And to continue it one more place, I'm going to multiply that by 2, and I would get my final variable of 64. My final sequence here is going to begin very much the same again. As I go from 2 to 4, I can start with adding 2 or multiplying by 2. And as I go from 4 to 8, I can start by adding 4 or multiplying by 2. And then as I go from 8 to 10, though, it's going to add a little wrench into it. Uh, again, I'm going to go with more of the basic operations, and I'm going to stick with adding 2. If I have to come back and change that, like I said, I can. So I'm going to continue on to go from 10 to 20, though. I could add 10 or multiply by 2. And to go from 20 to 22, I could add 2. Probably not going to figure out that decimal yet unless I cannot figure out this pattern. So now, looking back over my transitions, I'm looking for things that stick out to me. And what I do notice is that here I have multiply by 2, multiply by 2. I also have one here, but I what I do notice is that I, in addition, have an add to, and an add to, and an add to. So I can see that it is alternating from add to, to multiply to 2, to add to, to multiply to 2, to add to, and what I would do next is multiply by 2. So if I take 22 and I multiplied it by 2, I would get 
44. And then I would have to go back to my next step and I would then add to getting me my final variable of 46. For the previous problems, it was easy to identify a rule because once I identified the rule, it stayed consistent throughout the rest of the terms. However, you won't always find that to be true. So if I'm looking at this sequence and I'm starting with the first two, in order to get from one to two, I could either add one or multiply by two. And to go from two to five, I could add three. And again, sticking with the basics, probably not multiplying. But to go from five to 10, I could add five or multiply by two. And to go from 10 to 17, I could add seven, probably not multiplying. And to go from 17 to 26, I could add nine. Now, as you notice, if I'm looking for a pattern, I only see the two multiplying by twos here and it does not continue. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rule that out. But what I do notice is that with each step in this pattern, each term, it's going to transition. It goes add one, add three, add five, add seven, and add nine. So it is increasing by odd numbers. So the next logical step in the sequence would be to add, and the next odd number I would have is 11. So if I were to add 11 to 26, I would get 37. And the next odd number I would add is adding 13. And if I were to add 13 to 37, I would get my final variable of 50. Sometimes you will be given a list of steps to follow in order to generate a pattern. So it's just important to follow those instructions carefully. So the first thing I start with here is it tells me to start with two. So that's easy, I'm gonna start with the number two. Then it tells me to increase each term by adding. So I'm going to add. Then it tells me that each term will be even. So logically I think, hey, I'm going to add two. That will keep each term even until I get down to this last step. And it says, do not add by two. So I can no longer add by two. I'm gonna have to find something else. However, I know that if I add by four, I will also have even terms. So if I continue to do that and I add four, I'm gonna have six plus four will give me 10 plus 4 will give me 14 plus 4 will give me 18. So I have met the criteria and extended or created a pattern based on this. Now it is time for you to try some on your own. Here is a number sequence. I encourage you to pause the video and copy it down so you can use the carrots to identify transitions and figure out what the last two variables or last two terms in the sequence are. Go ahead and pause the video. Well, hopefully you finished. And what we'd like to do is compare our answers. So uh, as I went through, I went and drew in the carrots and I was able to find that there is a progressive pattern. I was continuing plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. So I continued the pattern by adding plus six and plus seven to get my last two terms in this sequence of 22 and 29. I hope you got the right answer. Let's move on to the next one. In this video, you have learned how to identify and generate numeric patterns.